again and welcome to Aerodynamics of Hypercars. Today we're analyzing the active aerodynamics of the McLaren P1. Now this is going to be a pretty short video because let's be honest, there's not much in the way of active aerodynamics on the P1. And this was my second favorite of the hypercars in terms of active aerodynamics. And the main reason is, is that it doesn't do anything fundamentally wrong with active aerodynamics. Whereas I feel like there's pretty significant flaws with the Ferrari and the Pagani and the Porsche. So just looking at the P1, what we've primarily got is this active wing at the back and then the active suspension. They're the two real active elements here. Now, looking at this wing in depth, we can see that it already is lacking end plates. And this is where I have my first gripe with it, which is they've gone too conservative. It's the same complaint I had with Koenigsegg about their active aerodynamics. And even though the P1's rocking a bit of a larger span, sorry, not a larger span, a larger cord, it just isn't utilizing that end bit. And I'm just gonna go straight out and say it, the P1 is probably, well, it's definitely my favorite of the looks from the hypercars. But the thing is, is that they couldn't probably get it to look amazing and be amazing at the same time. Inspecting these wing supports, we can see that they are, um, Big hydraulic ram, so you've got two hydraulic rams that are taking the main extension and then a central hydraulic ram which controls the tilt. Now straight away we can see that there's a significant height from the tilt to the wing. And what this means is that there's a big moment. Whenever there's a drag force or a lift force, it's going to be pushing back on that height. So as a result, this ram has to be quite heavy duty. And you can see these other rams are really heavy duty too because this wing has to retract. And I do like the fact that it's a retracting wing. While the Koenigsegg 1 to 1 can get around it because it's got a ridiculous amount of power and it has a coefficient of drag of about 0.45 even in the lowest drag setting, the P1 achieves a much, much, much lower coefficient of drag. I believe it's about 0.31 and that's largely because it can lower its drag significantly by doing things like retracting this rear wing. So it gets a big tick from me on the retraction of the rear wing. I'm also not a huge fan of these supports here themselves. The problem is that they're big cylinders and they haven't really done any streamlining of any sort on here and it leaves big holes and there's this big notch in under here. So from that point of view, they have diminished their aerodynamic performance by not correctly streamlining all these things. I assume that they're considering this an appropriate loss, either that or they're just trying to show off their nice fancy hydraulics and don't particularly care. Because let's be honest, you buy active aerodynamic supercars because they look really cool when they're working. The profile of turning it around is somewhat compensating for the lack of end plates and it's also stabilizing the wing in yaw. If you're drifting the car sideways, you'll have a crosswind component and by angling the wind like this, you can gain back a little bit of your performance because your wing sort of wraps around. So again, another win for the McLaren. And the plus side of this yaw component that I should probably mention is, is that if you're turning into a corner and the wind's coming here, you're going to end up with that yaw forcing on your inside tires. So what your car is naturally trying to roll away from. So basically in yaw, it will provide some degree of active anti-roll from the aerodynamics. The other thing that's good on the P1 is its DRS mode, where it obviously can just immediately snap flat the wing in the eventuality that you just want to go straight and it doesn't have to fully retract it. And that's another feature I like, but again, the Koenigsegg already does that and it wouldn't have anywhere near as much weight as this big area, which, as I mentioned before, has to be very structurally strong to fit this entire arrangement. And it's a long way out from the center of the chassis, unlike the pushrod system of the Koenigsegg. So we can see that this is going to cause a reduction in handling. Now, the final point I want to go through with that active aerodynamics is actually the suspension. And you may be asking me, well, we're talking about aerodynamics here, why are we looking at the suspension? And that's because the suspension on the McLaren is very, very clever. What it has is no anti-roll bars or anything like that. Everything is done by hydraulic circuits across the car. So you basically got hydraulic anti-roll and each damper has multiple circuits in it that all can communicate with the other dampers, control roll pitch, all that. And the most critical thing in any race car these days is working in the under tray, getting the floor right. And the problem is because that's in such close proximity to the ground, if it's moving around a lot, it will uh, be unstable in its lift. It won't be consistent. And also if you're rolling side side, let's say you roll on the side and your side opens up, 
you'll allow air to flow into the undertray and that will raise its pressure so you won't be getting as much downforce. So you want to keep your car dead flat, dead level at the design height and potentially be able to adjust it for rake depending on the straights. But the fundamental thing is you want to be able to control that and the McLaren does this perfectly. Its system allows it to really get good handle on roll and that really enhances the aerodynamics as well as the suspension on the car. So that's all for the analysis of the active aerodynamics of the P1. Thanks for watching and enjoy the other videos.